Hello, and welcome to Fusion News. I'm Jeff Peachman, a PhD student at the University of Washington studying plasma physics. I'm working with the Fusion Industry Association to keep you up to date on fusion technology, business, and policy. So let's get started. I have four main stories today. One, Helion raises $425 million to help build a fusion reactor for Microsoft. Two, deploying advanced energy tech faster. Three, UK AEA to invest 200 million pounds to advance fusion fuel development. Four, smart, one step closer to nuclear fusion with its first plasma. I also have two bonus stories at the end of the video. One, Helion raises $425 million to help build a fusion reactor for Microsoft. Last week, FIA member Helion Energy announced their Series F capital raise of 425 million US dollars, which brings their total valuation to over $5 billion. This news comes just after they activated their latest prototype fusion generator called Polaris. Helion believes that Polaris will be the first fusion device to generate electricity. They're also on a timeline. They have a contract with Microsoft and need to deliver electricity to the tech giant by 2028. Helion CEO David Kirtley told TechCrunch that a big challenge has been sourcing the chips. Polaris depends on thousands of high-speed solid-state switches to pulse their magnets, and these pulses are carefully controlled to accelerate plasmas until they collide in the center of the device. The energy released by these switches is stored in large capacitor banks, and it took them three years to acquire the capacitors that they need. This new funding will be utilized to insource the manufacturing of those capacitors, the magnets, and the semiconductors at a faster rate. Hopefully this helps them achieve their 2028 deadline. Two, deploying advanced energy tech faster. This next story covers a panel of experts at the World Economic Forum, which was held on January 22nd of this year. The panel was called Deploying Advanced Energy Tech Faster, and the host asked how do we design the innovation ecosystem, the financial support, the risk sharing and de-risking in order to get advanced energy technologies deployed as fast as possible? These energy technologies include, of course, fusion energy, but also long duration energy storage, geothermal energy, and small modular fission reactors. The panel talked about the technology development life cycle and noted that there's often a tipping point where technologies are ready for mass adoption. But how do we identify or predict these tipping points? There was agreement that there must be demand for a new technology to attract investment, and clearly we have a lot of demand for clean energy. They also agreed that the public and private sector needs to work together to make the new systems possible, such as having the correct regulations, permits, and sometimes financing. Bob Mumgard, the CEO of FIA member company, Commonwealth Fusion Systems, stated that the earliest indicator of a technology tipping point is when, it, is when the top talent goes to work on that problem. So the energy sector is attracting that talent. He says, quote, people are leaving landing rockets and going to Mars to focus on energy. And he's right, I'm one of those people and there are many more like me. Talented people are coming in from many different fields and bringing new ideas which will result in new technology. Dr. Mumgard also said that one key indicator is when important breakthroughs in science and technology converge. So for example, NIF proved that the physics of fusion works and around the same time, high temperature superconducting magnet technology became available. And now we have AI rapidly advancing as well. Kimberly Boodle, the director of Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, said that we're at a very interesting inflection point regarding computation and AI. Fusion experiments generate a very large amount of data on every experiment. AI is able to analyze and make inferences from that large amount of data at a pace that humans cannot. So these inferences can be used to design the next experiment at a high level of detail, which may enable rapid experimental iteration on fusion devices. The panel had many other interesting topics, such as a discussion about whether new technologies will trade one environmental problem for another, and another discussion about how much the demand for energy will increase during the energy transition. Overall, the panel made me 
more aware of the massive amount of work that we have left to do, but it still left me hopeful that these new technologies will be deployed reasonably soon. Three, UK AEA to invest 200 million pounds to advance fusion fuel development. So as I've talked about previously on this channel, most fusion energy companies plan to use DT fusion, which is where you fuse two isotopes of hydrogen, which is deuterium and tritium. Now deuterium is abundant, but tritium must be produced artificially. Now fortunately, lithium can be transformed into tritium. We just need to strike it with high energy neutrons. And those neutrons will come from the fusion reaction in the power plant, the same fusion reactor that will need that tritium. In theory, if you have enough tritium to get the power plant started, you can make all the tritium you need. We call this technology a tritium bre breeder blanket. We know the physical mechanisms that will make those blankets work, but an engineered product which can do this efficiently does not yet exist. To develop this tech, the UK Atomic Energy Authority will invest 200 million pounds into its new Lithium Breeding Tritium Innovation Program, or LIBERTY. Their goal is to demonstrate controlled tritium breeding within four years. Now to do that, they need a neutron source, and it can't just be any source. The neutrons need to come from a DT fusion reaction. So the UK plans to buy a fusion neutron source from Shine Technologies, an FIA member company based in Wisconsin. Their neutron sources do not produce net energy, and they aren't supposed to, but they do fuse deuterium and tritium. Currently, Shine's neutron sources are used to test components that need to survive in high radiation environments, such as spacecraft components. But now, Shine will play a critical role in developing the next generation of fusion technologies. Four, SMART, one step closer to nuclear fusion with its first plasma. The SMART tokamak achieved first plasma on January 23rd of this year. SMART stands for Small Aspect Ratio Tokamak, and it was built at the University of Seville in Spain. What's really interesting about this tokamak is its ability to shape the plasma in unique ways. It was designed to demonstrate something that they call negative triangularity. Now, most tokamaks these days have positive triangularity, which means that the plasma in the tokamak has a cross section, which is shaped like the letter D. And the flat part of the D is near the center of the device. A negative triangularity tokamak is the opposite. The flat part faces the outside of the device. So why are they doing this? Well, it could have a lot of advantages. In theory, it suppresses instabilities, meaning that the plasma could remain hotter for longer. It also may allow more durable diverters. A diverter is designed to remove spent fuel from the tokamak, and to do that, it handles the extremely hot plasma exhaust, which means that these diverters see incredibly high heat flux, much higher than you would see in a spacecraft re-entering Earth's atmosphere. Negative triangularity may allow us to have a larger diverter area, which means we can spread that heat around a lot more, reducing the heat flux, making the tokamak easier to build, easier to design, and more durable. That's it for our main stories, but if you haven't had enough fusion news yet, then I have some bonus stories that you can read yourself. Images show China building a huge fusion research facility, analysts say. Satellite images show a large facility being built in Mianyang, China, which closely resembles the National Ignition Facility, or NIF. As a reminder, NIF is an American research facility which uses lasers to implode pellets of fusion fuel. The researchers at NIF were the first in the world to achieve scientific break-even with fusion reactions, and China may be trying to replicate that. Private companies aim to demonstrate working fusion reactors in 2025. This story was published by Science.org, and it covers private fusion companies who anticipate major milestones this year, including FIA members General Fusion, Helion Energy, Commonwealth Fusion Systems, and TAE Technologies. The article also features some healthy skepticism about these timelines from Dr. Stephen Cowley, the director of the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed today's stories, and if you did, hit like and subscribe, and tune in every two weeks for more Fusion news. Once again, I'm Jeff Peachman, and I'll see you next time.